The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know mine, and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be Jesus and Mary. Today is Good Shepherd Sunday. That's based on the gospel that we just heard, the gospel of the Good Shepherd. And it is also the World Day of Prayer for vocations, especially to the priesthood and religious life. And so this is something that uh, we need to consider that every single person that comes into this world, God has a plan has a loving plan for them, and that includes his only begotten son, right? We see uh, Jesus explaining in today's gospel, this command I have received from my father. And so the father has a particular will for the son when he comes into this world. And what is that plan? What is that will of the father? Well, it is that his son be the cornerstone, be the savior of the world, and be the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. As we go back to today's first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, he is the stone rejected by the builders, which has become the cornerstone, that is the cornerstone of the church which he said he would build, right? I will build my church. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. There is nobody else who had the vocation to be the savior of the world. That was the vocation of the only begotten Son of God, Jesus Christ. And so we go to today's second reading, which explains to us, reveals to us uh, the vocation of mankind in general, our vocation in Jesus Christ. And this is where St. John in his letter talks about us being the children of God. See what love the Father has bestowed on us that we may be called the children of God. So this is the vocation in general of every person that comes into the world. They are called to become children of God by faith and by baptism, to be baptized into Christ Jesus, the eternal Son of God, and being baptized, you are then grafted into him and you become adopted sons and daughters of God the Father. So this is the vocation in general of every single person. This is what God the Father is calling them to, to become his children. We are God's children now, again, by faith and by baptism. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. So I like interpreting this particular passage, especially on Good Shepherd Sunday, this day dedicated to vocations, in reference to one's particular vocation, 
So we all have the general vocation of being God's children. Well, what is my particular vocation? We don't know that uh, as soon as we come out of the womb, as soon as we're born. We do know that if you're born, you are called to be a child, an adopted child of God. But we don't know your particular vocation. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. So a person's particular vocation within the mystical body of Christ is slowly revealed over time. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him. That is, whatever vocation you were called to and that is revealed to you over time, the purpose of it is that you'll become more and more conformed to Jesus Christ. That's the point, that you become more and more conformed into the likeness of the only begotten Son. And that is going to be lived out uh, in all of the different vocations, whether it be to the married life, the religious life, or the priesthood. Right? All in their own unique way are meant to conform you more and more to the only begotten Son of God. Now, of course, today being a day of particular of particular prayer for vocations to the priesthood and religious life. There we're talking about an even greater conformity, right? Somebody who uh, leaves the world or renounces marriage for the sake of the kingdom of God. That is a closer following of Jesus Christ who did not marry. That is a closer following of Jesus Christ who dedicated himself entirely to the ministry that the Father had given him. And so those are the vocations that uh, we're particularly praying for this day. And we see St. Peter, going back to today's first reading, embracing his vocation. Okay. His vocation not to be the cornerstone, but to be the rock upon which Christ would build his church. Not to be the chief shepherd, as Christ is the only chief shepherd of the church, the good shepherd, but to be the chief visible shepherd after our Lord ascends into heaven. That was Peter's vocation, and he embraced it. He said yes once he understood it, and as today's first reading says, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Namely, he's given all of those graces necessary to actually fulfill the will of the Father, to faithfully embrace and execute uh, his vocation that was given to him by Christ. So Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, he begins to launch out and preach to the people of Jerusalem to preach Christ, to bring people to repentance, faith, and baptism. So in a similar way, right, we are all called and uh, meant to embrace whatever vocation we've been given. And I want to just read now some advice that both the Second Vatican Council and the Catechism of the Catholic Church has for parents with regard to uh, their children's vocation. Because, you know, um, there are quite a few, okay, young people here who have not yet embraced a particular vocation. And what does the Second Vatican Council say to parents? It says, parents should encourage their children in the vocation which is proper to each of them, fostering with special care vocation to a sacred state. That's really important, that we allow children to have the freedom to discern whatever their vocation is, whatever they've been called to, but at the same time, to foster with special care a vocation to a sacred state, namely the priesthood or religious life, the life in which one dedicates him, himself entirely, herself entirely and directly to God for the sake of the kingdom. The Catechism goes on to say, this is paragraph 2233, parents should welcome and respect with joy and thanksgiving the Lord's call to one of their children to follow him in virginity for the sake of the kingdom, in the consecrated life or in the priestly ministry. So welcoming that vocation, because such a vocation requires certainly a sacrifice 
on the part of parents, maybe sacrificing their own plans that they had, their own vision for what the future would be like for their family, which probably included grandchildren and these type of things, right? We need to be ready to renounce our own plans if God has a different plan, to make that sacrifice in giving our children over entirely to the service of God. And on the part of children, they should cultivate an openness and be praying to be enlightened and inspired that their hearts would be inflamed and drawn to the will of the Father, whatever that may be. Because the Father knows best and he is infinite goodness and infinite love and his plan for you is only that. And now we know that whatever God's plan is, it is going to conform us to Jesus Christ, right? That's what uh, we already um, mentioned. And conforming ourselves to Jesus Christ means sacrifice, sacrificial love. So we need to remember that in whatever vocation we're called to. Uh, we look at St. Peter again as an example. Our Lord foretold the kind of death that he would die, one that would conform him to Christ crucified and it was Peter insisted, no, we're doing this upside down because I'm not worthy to be that much conformed to my Lord and Savior. But in any case, we know by all of the ex examples that whatever vocation we're called to, it will require sacrifice and renunciation. So let's not fear that. Let's not allow that to uh, discourage us. Uh, but instead, with the help of the Holy Spirit, just like St. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, we can go forward uh, courageously and with great love for the glory of God the Father and the salvation of souls. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.